welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. It is Monday, so that means that it is meal prep day. I can't wait to share these three recipes with you guys. We do a breakfast, a lunch, and a dessert that is out of this world. And wait until you see the smart points. And on top of that, it is clean eating. You cannot go wrong at all with these three recipes. So if you wanna see what's on my prep for the week, stay tuned. I'm gonna run from my given disaster Speed away from the holy mind Cry. Breakfast this week, I'm going to be making individual baked oatmeal cups. I'm really excited about this. Very clean, healthy breakfast. I'm going to pair this with eggs and fruit. So let me show you what is in our oatmeal cups. First, you're going to need some rolled oats. I'm gonna be using my favorite ones from the Thrive Market. These are the organic rolled oats. Highly recommend the Thrive Market. You guys know I love it. Of course, the link is down in the description box. It'll give you $20 worth of free product when you join the Thrive Market. And you're gonna be seeing, of course, a lot of Thrive products in this meal prep, as well as most of my videos. They really have affordable prices and they have literally anything and everything you would need for a healthy, clean diet. So definitely check them out. Again, the link is in the description box. We're also going to need some chia seeds, milk or milk alternative of your choice. I'm going to use forager cashew milk, baking powder, unsweetened applesauce, cinnamon and vanilla extract, some salt, honey, an egg, and then whatever toppings you want for your oatmeal cups. I'm gonna do zero point toppings so it doesn't increase the points of my oatmeal cups themselves. So I'm gonna be doing some fresh blueberries and then some of these organic dried goji berries from Thrive. I count these as zero because all that's in here is goji berries. So there's no added sugar or anything like that. So I don't count points for these because to me, this is basically like a regular fruit. So those are gonna be my toppings for my oatmeal cups. So let's get started. So in a fairly good sized bowl, we're gonna mix together one egg. We're also gonna add one cup of unsweetened applesauce. So go ahead and add in that. We're also going to do about a teaspoon of our vanilla extract. We have one mashed banana. I did not show you guys this when I showed you all the ingredients, so I apologize. You're also going to need one fairly ripe banana that you mash up. And then last but not least, I have a quarter of a cup of my raw honey. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in that. And then we are going to give this a mix until all of these wet ingredients are nice and combined before we add in our dry ingredients. Once your wet ingredients are combined, we're gonna go ahead and add in two and a half cups of our rolled oats. We're also going to add a pinch of salt. I just used the pink Himalayan. That's just really gonna help bring out the flavors. We're gonna do one eighth of a cup of chia seeds. A little bit of cinnamon or a lot of bit of cinnamon, whatever your preference is. The recipe calls for a tablespoon, so we need quite a bit of cinnamon added to our dry ingredients. And then one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So I have a half of a teaspoon here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add three of those. And then we're gonna give this a quick mix together before we add in our almond milk. All right, last step is we're gonna put in our almond milk or whatever milk you're using and give that another stir. And that was one and a quarter cup of milk. So we're gonna make sure that gets nice and combined and then we'll be ready to put these into our muffin cups and get these into the oven. So I went ahead and pulled out my muffin pan. This is a fun silicone one, super cute. I got this at Fred Meyer. So I went ahead and just sprayed it with some of the avocado oil nonstick cooking spray. You can also use a paper liner, whatever your preference is. And we are going to fill these with about a quarter of a cup of our oatmeal mixture. We want to make sure we get 12 muffins. So you can always go back and add a little bit more, but it's a lot harder to take away. So I'd go a little bit light on the amount to start and then again we can always go back in and add some more so go ahead and fill all 12 of your muffin liners with your oat mixture and then we'll be ready to add our toppings and get these into the oven i want to be daring baby dance the night away i let my head down if i want 
Now that they're filled with the oatmeal mixture, we're gonna go and add toppings. So again, I'm going to do some blueberries. So I'm just gonna kind of plunk these in to the oatmeal mixture. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and add a couple of goji berries. I'm gonna kind of push those down in. I wanna make sure that my fruit stays in the oatmeal cup as it goes through the cooking process. So I'm doing about four blueberries and about four or five of the little goji berries. And that's gonna be my topping. So let's get the toppings on so we can get these into the oven. Right away I let my head down if I won. Don't you just get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time. All right, they're ready to go into the oven, 350 degrees. Until they're cooked through, it's going to take about 30 minutes. I'm so excited for these. The oatmeal cups are out of the oven. Don't these look delicious? Next time I probably, or for you guys, if you're gonna use a dried fruit like these goji berries, I put them on once you pull them out of the oven because you can see they got a little bit brown because they were already dried. So that's one difference that I would make. Still going to taste delicious, not worried about it. But for you guys, that's probably a good tip. So I'm gonna let these cool for a couple minutes. We'll pop them out of the muffin tin here and I'll show you what I'm having for breakfast and give you the smart points. So our oatmeal cups are cooled. I just popped them out of the cupcake liner. They came out like a champ. So make sure you spray your muffin tin if you're not going to use a paper liner. My gosh, these look so good. Look at these, you guys. They're nice and thick and just dense with oatmeal. And then we topped them with those goji berries and blueberries. These look amazing. So each one of these oatmeal cups is four smart points and that's on the blue and green plan. If you are on purple, these are only two smart points because your oats are zero points. So I'm planning on having one of these oatmeal cups an egg whether i fry that or hard boil that and then i'm just going to pair it with just a few extra of these organic blueberries and that's going to be my breakfast that way my breakfast is only four smart points so can't beat it i am going to store these in a plastic container with a lockable lid so they stay nice and fresh and i'm just going to put them in the fridge and each day i will take one to eat but how amazing of a breakfast and it's only four smart points lunch this week I'm going to be making turkey meatballs with an apple and onion the original recipe calls for red onion but I don't have any so I'm just subbing minced onion and then I'm gonna roast some veggies so I'm gonna roast up some butternut squash and some organic beets and I'm gonna have those on the side with my meatballs and in my veggies or for my veggies I have avocado oil and then I'm going to be topping my veggies with the Dax green zest you guys know this is my all-time favorite seasoning for vegetables. It's so good. The veggies come out so flavorful. I love Dax because not only are they all natural, so there's nothing artificial, no fake anything, so it's a nice, clean spice. They're also natural, MSG-free, and all of the ingredients you can literally pronounce in the seasoning. So it's very, very simple, very minimal ingredients. I love the green zest for veggies. I actually have all of the Dax seasonings because Honestly, I love them all. I do have 10% off and free shipping for Dax. That code will be here on the screen. Give them a try. They're a small business. Great to support them during this time. And you won't be sorry because with their seasonings all being salt-free, they're great before weigh-in or if you watch your salt and they're full of flavor, like full of flavor. So I'm gonna put some of this on my veggies. And then I'm also gonna put a little bit of the Trader Joe's onion salt. And then for the meatballs, you're going to need a pound of ground turkey. So I just have some 93.7 organic ground turkey. You're going to need an egg, salt and pepper. Again, I'm using minced onion in place of red onion poultry seasoning, garlic powder, and you're gonna need a Granny Smith or green apple. So let's get started on this week's lunches. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and chop our beets. I'm just going to put them in a bowl here. And we also need to dice up our apple and I'm gonna put that here in a bowl as well. And then we can start assembling our meatballs. You can do better. Let me show you what a good time looks like. You can do better. So much better. Mm -hmm. I don't fit to your parts. Beauty queens with no flaws. You can do better. I dare you to be wilder. I don't fit into your parts. Beauty queens with no flaws. You can do better. I dare you to be wilder. I want to be silly, baby. Dancing night. So 
let's put together the meatballs with my beet hands. It's hilarious. So I have my one pound of 93.7 ground turkey. To that, I'm going to add my chopped apple. I ended up having more apple than my little bowl would hold here. So I have the remainder just on a paper towel. So we'll go ahead and add that in. And then we're also going to add one egg. That's going to help bind our meatballs. And then for onion, it calls for a half of a cup of red, but because these are minced, I'm only going to do about a quarter of a cup of minced onion. Onion. and then we're gonna add some garlic powder and again you can season this to your liking the recipe calls for about a teaspoon of garlic powder and then we have some poultry seasoning as well and we want about a tablespoon of that that is what is going to give our meatballs that authentic meatball flavor so it's really important to add in that poultry seasoning and then we're gonna do just a pinch of pepper and again just kind of to your liking and a pinch of some pink Himalayan salt and then we're going to use our little spoon here and combine this all together to create the meatball mixture and then we'll get ready to roll these out and get them on a sheet pan we are going to put these in the oven right alongside our vegetables and they're both going to get roasted at the 425 degrees so let's get this combined and get these meatballs ready to go so we're ready to do the meatballs look at how good that looks so this recipe makes four servings so it really doesn't matter the number of meatballs whatever the number you get Get, you want to divide that by four to make the four servings so I've aligned my pan here with some parchment paper I'm going to use my cookie scoop to scoop out my meatballs it makes it really easy and that way I don't have to dig my hands in these scoops I find these on Amazon and I will make sure that I link them down below for you guys but I'm just gonna use those to form my meatball. And again, I'm not really concerned with the number of meatballs that I get because I will simply just take the number that I get and divide it by four for the four servings. So let's get these scooped out onto our sheet pan here. And then we'll go ahead and get those roasted veggies on a sheet pan, season those up, and we'll be ready to put everything into the oven. I went ahead and put my beets and my butternut squash here on my sheet pan. I decided that I'm going to add a bag of broccoli as well. I have a ton of frozen veggies right now, and I think I mentioned, but our microwave isn't working. We're in the process of getting that replaced from our home warranty company, and they're really quick to take your money, but not really quick to replace your appliances. So we still don't have a microwave. So this is gonna be the best way, I think, for me to get in some greens, is by just adding this bag of frozen broccoli directly to my sheet pan. So these are my veggies. So to that, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of my avocado oil. So I usually do one quick swipe across and then one quick swipe this way and I count about a tablespoon worth of avocado oil which I believe is four points so I will add an extra point to whatever my meatballs end up for the vegetables and then I'm going to season these with some of the dax and hey the more the merrier when it comes to seasoning on these veggies so I'm going to go ahead and add the dax and last but not least just a very small amount of the Trader Joe's onion salt and that just kind of brings that onion vibe into our roasted veggies and then this is going to go in the same 425 degree oven as our meatballs so let's get everything into the oven so that we can have lunch ready to go all right our veggies are out of the oven steaming piping hot so I'm going to go ahead and add these to the meal prep containers the meatballs are already in there as you can see here and I'll be back to show you the whole lunch and give you the points all right so here is lunch you guys I cannot wait for this lunch first I want to show you I did not end up using all of the roasted veggies which is fine I love to have these as an easy warm-up side dish I even like to add these on to salad with dinner or lunch they're really really versatile so I'm totally fine having extra but I'm going to count one smart point for the roasted veggies just because I did end up using the olive oil. So I'm going to count one point for my veggies. And then we have three meatballs per day. So it ended up making 12 meatballs. It is four smart points per serving. So all three of these big meatballs is only four smart points. And then you add the one point for the roasted veggies. You guys, this is a five smart point lunch. Look how amazing this looks. You even have room for a fruit if you wanted to add a fruit and you can also add 
something sweet to finish off your lunch and you have plenty of points to spare. So this is a five smart point lunch. So I decided with my lunch, I'm gonna have some papaya and I just thought that I would show that to you guys. I went ahead and just cut this all up, bagged it up, and that's gonna be kind of my fruit or sweet treat with lunch. Look at how yummy this looks. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Literally, you guys, this is the best marinara. It's that simple. It takes five minutes to put it together. I'll show you guys once it's done how I package it up. I just freeze it and pull out a jar as needed. So wait till you guys see this. It is seriously the best marinara. This is the skinniest dish. And of course, this recipe will be on my website. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. I think I'm going to do mine on high just because I'm starting this a little bit late for four hours and then I can come back and change it down to low if I feel like it's just cooking a little bit too fast for another four hours or so. So let me get this closed up and we've got marinara going. So I wanted to show you guys how I do my crock pot marinara. You can see we still have a couple hours left, but I stored in mason jars. So I have these really large ones. These are like 32 ounce and I will put a few of those and then I generally do a couple small jars as well this is if I want to make pizza or maybe chicken parm or something that I don't need a lot of the marinara at once I will have some small jars and then I'll have quite a few of the big 32 ounce jars the rule of thumb is if you're gonna freeze it is just shallow the jar a little bit so when it expands when it freezes it doesn't pop the lid off I've never had a problem I've never had the jar break I've never had the lid pop off nothing of the sort so that's how I store my marinara I literally just put them in jars put them in the freezer and when I need them I pull them out defrost them and you have zero point marinara whenever you want it For a snack or sweet treat this week, I'm feeling all things spring. So we're going to make a lemon poppy seed loaf. We are making a glazed with frosting loaf and wait till you guys hear the smart points. And we're using good whole clean ingredients, full fat yogurt, full fat milk, I can't wait to share this recipe with you. So let me show you what's in our lemon poppy seed loaf. First you're going to need some whole milk, just some all-purpose flour. This is the organic all-purpose from the Thrive Market. Again, Thrive is linked down below. Lakanto monk fruit sweetener and their powdered sugar. And this is for the frosting or the glaze of the loaf. You'll need some almond extract, vanilla extract, some poppy seeds, baking powder, baking soda, some sort of oil. I just have avocado oil here. It doesn't have any flavor, so it doesn't affect the flavor of the loaf. You'll also need some full fat or whatever you want to use, not Greek yogurt, a fresh lemon, and last but not least, some salt. So let's make some poppy seed lemon bread. So to start our loaf, I have a fairly good sized bowl here. To that, I'm going to add two cups of the organic all-purpose flour. Again, you can use whatever flour you have on hand. And then I have the zest of that large lemon. I went ahead and just zested the whole thing. I always figure the more lemon zest, the better. I don't worry about measuring it out because I really think it brings that brightness of lemon to your, your bread. So there's my lemon. And then I have two tablespoons of poppy seeds. So I'm gonna add those. And then I am going to do about a half of a teaspoon of my pink salt. And we need to go ahead and add our leveling agent. So we need three quarters of a teaspoon of both. So there's half of a teaspoon and then another quarter of the baking soda. And we're gonna do the same with the baking powder. And then we'll give this all a good stir, get those dry ingredients combined, and then we'll be ready to add in our wet ingredients. 
Next, we're gonna mix together some of our wet ingredients. So we need one tablespoon of oil. Again, whatever oil you are using. This is just the Chosen Foods avocado oil. And then we're going to add in one egg. I don't think I showed you guys at the beginning. I don't know what my deal is today, but you're gonna need one room temperature egg as well. And then about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then we're just going to whisk this together before we add in the yogurt and the rest of our wet ingredients. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in our lemon juice. I have about two tablespoons of fresh squeeze, just what was left of that large lemon that I zested. And then I'm also going to add the one half of a cup of Greek yogurt. Mine is the whole milk full fat. It does not adjust the points really to add the non-fat. It may save you a small amount. I honestly didn't figure that out into the recipe. So you can certainly re-put the ingredients into the recipe builder if you wanna use non-fat Greek yogurt instead of regular Greek yogurt. But like I said, it, for me, I don't think it's going to change the points. And I've been only having full fat dairy. So whatever your preference is. So go ahead and give that a mix together. And then we're going to start alternating between this mixture, our flour mixture here, and our milk. So I have my dry ingredients here. I have six tablespoons of whole milk, and then I have the yogurt egg mixture that we put together over here. So first I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of the milk to my dry mix, and we're just going to slowly incorporate all of these ingredients into our dry mix until we have batter. And then we'll add this to our bread pan and get this into the oven. You can do better, I dare you to be wilder So we're ready to get our bread ready and go into the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray my bread pan really, really well with some non-stick spray. This is just the Chosen Foods avocado oil. And then I'm ready to go ahead and add my batter. My oven is preheating to 350 degrees and we're going to cook our loaf until it is cooked completely through. It's probably going to take between 40 and 45 minutes. That's just going to depend on your oven. So we'll get the batter in here and get it ready to go in. So our bread is going in 350 degrees until it is cooked through 40 to 45 minutes. So while our bread's in the oven, we're gonna make our glaze. So I'm using the Lakanto powdered sugar. This is two times sweeter than regular sugar, so it's actually half of the amount of this versus regular sugar. So the recipe calls for four tablespoons of powdered sugar, so I went ahead and just did two tablespoons of this because it's two times sweeter, so we wanna use half the amount. And then we're also going to add in just the tiniest bit of almond extracts and we're also going to thin it out with some milk. So I'm just gonna put in a little bit of milk to start, and then we'll start stirring until we have that glaze consistency. You don't wanna add too much milk right off the bat or your glaze is going to be too thin. This actually looks really good. So we're just gonna go ahead and set this aside until that loaf comes out of the oven and is nice and cooled. All right, our lemon poppy seed loaf is out of the oven. We're gonna let this cool just a few minutes in the pan, then I'll pop it out and allow it to cool completely. Once it is cooled, we're gonna go ahead and add on this glaze, and then I'll be back to show you our completed bread, and we'll go over the smart points once we put on that glaze. All right, our loaf is fully cooled, so what we're gonna do next is take this glaze that we made, and we're just going to drizzle it right over the top Oh my gosh, you guys, this is gonna be so good. I cannot wait to try this. I'm actually going to have this for a snack today because I love everything and anything lemon, as you know. So I'm excited for this. So I'm gonna get this glaze. Oh, it's so pretty. We'll cut this into 12 slices and I'll be back to show you our completed lemon loaf and give you the smart points. All right, so here it is. So this is a slice. So we went ahead and cut it into 12 equal slices. So that is a good size slice, as you can see here. So the loaf, again, it makes 12 slices. So each one of these sections gets cut into three, and it is only three smart points per slice on all plans. You can have a frosted lemon poppy seed loaf, basically cake, for three smart points. Cannot wait. Of course, this recipe will be on my website, which is linked down in the description box. So here are my snacks for this week. I actually have three snack options 
I don't eat all of these every day. These are just my options for the week. So I did haul these in my recent Thrive order, which you guys will see in Wednesdays what I eat in a day. I found some really great new products at Thrive. These are the Mary's Gone Crackers. These are the real thin, no wheat crackers. So these are very similar to a wheat thin without the wheat. So I'm really excited about these. You can actually have nine crackers for five smart points. I'll probably only have half of that amount of crackers. And I like to dip that in my Good Culture Cottage Cheese. This is the really full fat double cream classic cottage cheese. I believe this is four smart points for half of a cup. So I'll usually do half a cup of that for four points and then two points worth of crackers and it's a six smart point snack. Way to go, Jen. Or you can do less and less, whatever your preference is, but I like having this. It's a good source of carb and protein mixed together. And then I have these two good yogurts. I like these. I really prefer the Siggy's Full Fat, but like I've mentioned, they're really, really hard for me to find in my area. So these two goods are only two points and they have good ingredients. And then I like to top it with my Pro Granola from Julian Bakery. This is the Espresso Cluster. There's tons and tons of different flavors. You guys, if you're looking for a clean granola, Julian Bakery Pro Granola is as clean as it gets and the smart points are amazing. You can have an entire half of a cup for two smart points, which means you can have a quarter cup for one point of clean granola. I literally put like a tablespoon on my yogurt so I don't even count it where you would have to count normal granola so I love this granola it's really good here are your stats on the granola so there's tons of fiber there's even protein so you get that little extra bit of protein boost and again ingredients are stellar absolutely stellar ingredients so I love this granola I do have 10% off I'll put that code here on the screen for you guys and there's a link down in the description box but this is only two points because I literally do not add more than a tablespoon and that is zero smart points. I love the espresso cluster, but they have tons of great flavors. Just check them out over on their website. And lastly is Built Bar. You guys know I like to have these as an option as well because they keep me full and I get that little boost of protein. So this one is one of my favorites. This is the coconut almond. It's a legit almond joy. It's so good. And here's your nutritional information. This is only three smart points and you're getting 18 grams of protein for those three smart points. You can't beat it. Also, I love their nut-based bars, and this is the peanut butter. You'll notice that the protein is much more, as well as the fiber and the fat. So I find that the nut bars, even though they're four points instead of three, keep me much more full and satisfied for longer, and I think it's that extra boost of protein, fat, and fiber. So I love the Bilt Bars. They're three to four points, depending on the kind of Bilt Bar that you purchase, but I also have a code for 10% off and free shipping of Bilt Bar. And if you're new to Built Bar and you've never ordered before, or if you have a second email that you can use to order, I have a link for $10 off. And I'm gonna put that down in the description box. It is a special link for first time Built Bar or new email Built Bar customers. So take advantage of that if you've never ordered before and get the $10 off. Also, if you have a second email address you can use, you can get the $10 off as a new customer. So love Built Bar. So those are my snacks for this next week. Thank you for joining me on another weekly My WW Meal prep. You guys, these recipes, I'm so excited to eat these all week. And that lemon poppy seed loaf, three points, what? Where can you get a bread like that full of so much goodness? Spring vibes for three smart points. Cannot wait. But I'm going to put all of these recipes on my website. The link to my website is down in the description box below. Also, you're going to find the links to my favorite things, discount codes, and the link to head on over and join me on my Facebook group. We'd love to have you be part of our awesome community over there. So definitely click down in the description box to find all of the links. Also, if you're new, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this week's meal prep and thank you to for, to all of you for taking time out of your busy day to watch my video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on so you don't miss a single video. We don't want you to miss out. Give this one a big thumbs up if you love meal prep and leave your comments down below. I wanna hear what was your favorite recipe and which one or ones are you dying to try. Happy Monday, my friends. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.